anger is a response to the violation of a boundary. It could be your own boundary, it could be a boundary violation that you witness. And it gives the energy to overcome fear to do something about it. The way that the status quo is maintained is that this sacred force of anger is diverted onto targets and solutions that shield the kernel of the problem from, from action. So, if, you know, for example, one time I was at, at a, uh, this was a few years ago, I had a little kid, I was at the playground and I was watching the other parents, you know, with their kids. And there was one woman who was just incredibly mean to her child, you know? And so that caused anger. The main diversion of anger is onto hate and blame. Judgment. Judgment. So the problem is this horrible woman. But then I thought, well, what's it like to be her? How did she wake up this morning? What pressure does she have in her life? Does she have, you know, maybe an alcoholic husband? Are they facing bankruptcy? Uh, did they just have a car repair needed that they can't afford? Um, like, is she in chronic pain? Uh, did she just get a cancer diagnosis? Like, what are these pressures that she might be subject to? And when I felt into that, instead of, uh, instead of channeling my anger onto blame, I was able to, to transmute it, to transmute it. And I was like, I, I was like, Hey, having one of those days, huh? Hmm. You know, she's like, yeah, you know? And so she starts talking to me and, and the kid is no longer being micromanaged and he's, you know, he's allowed to play, you know, and maybe she feels a little bit better. And maybe all of those conditions that are, that were making her into, into such a horrible parent were, a little bit changed, you know, a, a little bit because I am part of those conditions. And then there's the level of who put me at that playground at that moment as maybe one of a series of encounters that prepares the ground for her to have a transformative experience. I don't know. I never met her again. I have no idea. But this is the kind of faith that that when you step into the faith of I am in the right place at the right time and I know what to do, it becomes more and more true. You're entering into a reality, into a vibrational alignment with the reality of purpose, of intelligence. Because we are powerful creators. When we live in a story that the events of the world are the random result of physical forces and, and the self-interested calculations of of genetically driven competitors or economically driven competitors, when you enter into that world in which matter is dead and mechanical and there's no spirit, it becomes true. And the allies of synchronicity that would otherwise be available abandon us. And we are marooned in a soulless universe. But there's part of us that maintains a tether to a much bigger reality. And, and the more that we trust that knowledge, I am in the right place at the right time with the right gifts and I know what to do, it activates it and it becomes more and more true and we end up living in a very different world.